Good day, my plant foldies. This is Richie at Grow Folds, and today we will be local nursery plant shopping at Callaway's off of Preston Road in Plano, Texas. As always, please make sure you are hitting the like button for my videos as I do one hour videos daily. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel for these plant shopping videos. With spring already in full effect, we are looking at an Acer palmatum, Tamukeyama, Tamukeyama, which is basically a lace leaf Japanese maple. I love Japanese maples and, you know, just to see them budding out and actually unfurling their leaves is just a signified, it signifies that spring 2024 is here. Really excited to see that. If you um, have gone to see my channel, I haven't really featured a lot of outdoor plants, but I also want to sprinkle that in as I love outdoor gardening as well. Um, I really like um, Japanese maples. Um, for a couple years, I was really into them and then I fell out of them. And now I am thinking about getting back into them. So I'm going to be showing you guys some more Japanese maples. Here is a really interesting Japanese maple on a trellis. This one is an Acer Palmatum Blood Good. So this is really one of your common red um, Japanese maples. This one is by Patio Collection, Bountiful Farms. This is honestly my first time ever seeing a bamboo trellis and this one is for $799. Um, I think that this would have taken quite a bit to get this um, Japanese maple to be trained on this trellis. So, you know, with Japanese maples, they are very slow growing. Um, they don't do very well in, um, you know, full direct sunlight they need some shade but they also need bright indirect light um, their leaves burn in you know really hot temperatures so growing them out in north dallas which is where um, i am based at for the the new viewers that are watching this video has been challenging but if you can get them the right um, conditions you can get something as elegant and beautiful as this plant right here you can see there is just a little bit of burning um you know these types of japanese maples do better in the pacific northwest um where you know temperatures are a little bit bit more um stable as compared to you know 100 degree weather that we get in the summertime at texas so i did want to show you this beautiful japanese maple this is an acer palmatum blood good and you know i buy a lot of my japanese maples actually at metro maples which is a japanese um, nursery in fort worth texas um, that's owned by a friend of mine his name is scott hubble so i will feature that but as you guys can see here i love variegated plants and this is a raspberry ice bougavillea i'm actually thinking about getting another bougavillea and making this into a bonsai tree or trimming it down and putting it in a bonsai pot so for those that don't know what bonsai are it's basically the art of growing a tree a shrub into a shallow pot and really shaping and wiring the the these the branches to actually get that shape so we'll see if i will do that eventually and then we've got this gorgeous looking flowering plant right here very delicate looking flowers they remind me of um, crepe myrtles white crepe myrtles um, you know, if you are out in North Dallas, they have so many crepe myrtles and you can see here some more ornamental magnolia um, trees. Look at the gorgeous blooms on this white magnolia. You know, when you think about magnolia trees, um, you think of the South and they've got that, you know, that purple lavender looking one right there. That's a saucer magnolia. And the thing about it is I grew one, but for some reason it just didn't do very well in my landscape. So I don't know if it just got too hot or if I planted it at the wrong time. So I'm still learning a lot about just outdoor gardening as well. Um, but you can see right here, this Callaway's right off of Preston Road is amazing. It's right next to the George um, Bush Tollway. So for the local plant, you know, foldies that are actually watching my videos, check out this Callaway's and you can walk in here and you can see there are so many plants. It looks like they just got a shipment in. And oh my gosh, they've got an Epipremnum Panatum um, on a totem neon for $39.99 that is not a bad price at all for that you know that that plant was actually very uncommon a couple of years back and now you can see them in a local plant nursery and you can see these are huge philodendron um, bilitiers i believe these are for $59.99 and i was actually tempted to buy this one just because it's already a fairly established plant um, in a 10 inch planter i definitely want to get a philodendron bilitier just because i love the orange stems really nice looking one and then you can see here from a previous video we've got some gorgeous um water fixtures right here i wouldn't mind getting this one this one would definitely you know fit my zen vibe that i have in my backyard i have a japanese 
um, garden that I have been working on for a couple of years. It's just a matter of getting some of my canopy trees to really grow in size so I can grow more like azaleas, gardenias, camellias um, in that area where they really require a lot more shade. And, you know, Texas, especially North Texas, gets some really hot weather in the summer. And so I definitely need that shade. But let's just take a look at all of these gorgeous looking plants. I like actually going to this particular um, Callaways. I know that I've been featuring a lot of local plant nursery videos. So for those that are um, tuning in and have discovered my channel, I know that you're looking for more of the big box store plant shopping videos, but it's it's always nice to expose you guys to different um you know plants like this this is an arabian jasmine for 29.99 in the philippines where my family is from we call that sampaguita and that is actually the national flower of the philippines and you can see right over here we've got a cordyline hawaiian tea plant love this plant i just wish cordyline would do um well indoors they just tend to get spider mites when grown indoors and here we've got aglonema spring snow gorgeous looking aglonema i love aglonemas they are my favorite um, plant but as of late my aglonemas haven't been doing as well i don't know why they've started to get a little bit leggy so i'm gonna have to do a little bit more research on that they may drop in my favorites list and syngonias might actually take the top crown for me as far as like what plants i grow but other you know needless to say i love aglonemas and in here we've got uh, monstera deliciosa um, thai constellation Look at this gorgeous one. It's actually a mature one or semi-mature one for a pretty good price. I think it's $499 for a um, really established one already. So it's just so interesting. My plant foldies and my viewers watching this live premiere, how it's, you know, Monstera Thai constellations like four years ago were so expensive. So it just goes to show that, you know, you might see a plant that's trending. Like for instance, we'll say variegated alocasias but give it a couple years and they will drop in price. Here is a Calathea warzekwixii. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, you know, forgive me if I didn't pronounce it correctly, but this one is that velvety texture Calathea and that one's actually in bloom. And then we've got another Calathea here that I'm not 100% sure what the plant ID is. So as always, for those viewing my um, videos, if you know the plant ID, please put a timestamp in the comments so that way I can learn from you. You know, these um, plant shopping videos are really meant to, you know, show plants, talk about plants, but also learn from each other. So I always appreciate those that leave um, comments for the plant IDs. And right over here, we've got another Monstera Thai Constellation. This one's for $249.99. That is not a bad price at all. I love that as in this is a fairly established plant already. The only thing you have to be um, a little bit concerned about with Thai Constellations, especially when they're in their juvenile form, is they're susceptible to root rot. So try not to water your Thai Constellation often. And if you can, give it a very airy, aeroid mix. Here we've got a ficus audrey. Love ficus audrey. Mine is starting to recover as well. It lost all of its leaves. And look at this sea of pink plants. Gorgeous polka dot plants right here. You know, polka dot plants, unfortunately, as gorgeous as they are, and as much as I love like um, pink plants, they are just a little bit more finicky and we'll get into details about that later but here we've got a spring cactus so we've got christmas cactus and now these are the spring cactus right here i actually am thinking about getting this one um it's got pink blooms for 7.99 i just love callaways because they have such diverse plants and you can go to several locations of them but anyway so go back to polka dot plants love that the, you know these are pink plants i love pink plants you know leave in the comments if you are a fan of pink plants the problem with polka dot plants are i don't know if it's just they require a little bit more humidity um if they just need to stay a little bit more wet i mean this one's 5.99 i just haven't been able to successfully grow a polka dot plant um, either I overwater them and they get crispy or I underwater them and then they get crispy as well So it's really a finicky plant at least in my experience Let me know in the comments or even in the live premiere chats if you've grown um, polka dot plants and how they work out for you For me, they haven't done well and then here we've got a gorgeous looking tulip right here Look at how large that bloom is and then the pink flower so you know as i do more of my plant shopping videos especially when i go to like a local plant nursery in dallas or even outside of dallas um, i will be featuring more outdoor plants i think um you know diversifying the plant content would really just attract even more of a larger crowd you know um, i call my viewers and subscribers plant foldy so if you are new to the channel welcome to the channel you are now a certified plant foldy um, i get that 
that name plant foldy because originally this channel was an origami asmr channel so the foldy part is with the whole like paper folding so um that's how i got my um, you know viewers names plant foldies and you can see we saw a bunch of those kalanchoes and this one right here is a sinanraria sinanraria i don't know how to pronounce that correctly but this one is a beautiful blooming plant as well look at that um, they are part of the sunflower um, family. These ones can be found in Southern Africa. Or that's their native habitat. So that's really cool that, you know, we get so many plants and they're, you know, plants from all over the world that, you know, there are different places where they're endemic. And that one is actually from um, the Southern part of Africa. But look at how gorgeous all of these plants are. And we're just going to take a look at all these blooming plants. got a straw flower um, these are not a bad price at all $12.99 so whenever you touch a straw flower it literally feels like straw um, I thought that they were fake flowers oftentimes when I touch one of these um, I already think that they're like dried flowers but they are not they are a living flower and that's something I would be in I would actually consider buying these are all annuals and then we've got some stock flowers right over here in the background, we've got some um, Epiprenum Panatum on a totem, the Albo version, very nice looking one. Love this. And that's the thing again with aeroids, philodendron, and just any of those plants that like to climb up. If they climb up a pole, they will get larger. They will fenestrate. And fenestrating is basically their leaves will um, actually split. And you'll just get a higher um, quality plant, or at least in my opinion, growing plants up a pole. You, you really maximize on this their um, natural beauty. And right over here, um, we've got some Helleborus. Um, or Leighton Rose. So these ones actually bloom in the winter. Um, this one is for $29.99. I like the look of this flower just because it's got like a green, almost very um, pastel lavender color to them. It's a nice looking plant. Just not sure how I would use that in a landscape. But today I almost bought an Abutilon, which is basically a flowering maple, even though it is not an actual Acer or a maple tree. What I like about it is um, the, um, the flowers and also the, the shape of the leaves. They look like maple leaves right here. So that's why they call it a flowering maple. I've seen a couple of like plant YouTubers like Harley G grow these indoors. Um, I should have bought a couple of them. The Red Tiger one actually when I was out in Austin, Texas at Tillery Street um, um, Nursery. They actually had some cuttings and some small starter ones, but these are just a regular green ones. These are for $12.99. I will actually get maybe the red version, but the, the one that I would really like to get is considered, like, look at that, look at these flowers. Um, I would actually get the red Chinese lantern one or the, the, ti the tiger version where it's got some really good variegation. But again, with these, you would really need to give it a lot of bright indirect light. I would definitely grow this outdoors, but I would be curious to see if I can grow those indoors or at least overwinter them when the time comes. But look at all of the plants here. Love this paradise. You know, leave me in, you know, leave it in the comments if you guys like this kind of content, especially featuring, um, you know, Callaway's Nursery. I am a huge fan of Callaway's Nursery. So when you think of about like a big box, um, plant nursery chain this would be it except they have amazing plants um, Callaway's nursery is really located in all of North Dallas and all of the Dallas Fort Worth area actually so many locations and I just love the fact that they have a good return policy where if you're not satisfied with the plant if the plant dies as long as you bring the dead plant in they will do a refund for you no questions asked typically when I do a return I end up buying three or four more plants so they end up just making more money for me and then the cycle just starts all over again but let's just take a look at all of the plants here and admire what we're seeing
right here, we are looking at some gardenias. I really like this for $16.99, a six um, inch starter planter for gardenias. That is another plant that I would love to add into my um, outdoor space. Just not sure if they could really survive the cold weather. I mean, we do get some frost, so, you know, but that's something I wanna add into my landscape. Look at these Rex begonias. I've shown this before, but that's for $16.99. But look at how large these Rex begonia are. Love Rex begonias. Look at how large the leaves can get. Um, I may end up getting one of these from Callaway's. You know, I probably need to hurry on and get one of these before all of the good ones get sold. As you can see, this um, Callaway's just recently got stocked. And then right here is a gorgeous looking um, coleus plant. Um, not a bad price at all for coleus. If you haven't already, I um, uploaded two shorts videos of my grandmother's coleus collection. She ended up just getting a couple of starter plants, grew them, and just propagated so many um, pots of coleus. They're so easy to propagate. So check that out if you haven't already. I have, um, you know, two short clips. And if you can, please hit the like button for those um, shorts videos, as well as this video here. Um, it really does help with the engagement and to grow my channel and you can see here this one has a subtle pink one this one is the one i would most likely buy if i were to choose and look at the undersides of the leaves now with rex begonias again they need bright and direct light they definitely don't want their stems their leaves or their canes to get wet wet with water otherwise they will basically get mushy and then die so when you're um basically watering rex begonias or just begonias in general you want to bottom water water them if possible but Look at all of these beautiful plants here. I love just doing plant shopping videos for you just because you can see like gorgeous ones like this. Like this is a coleus plant that I would buy specifically just for the outlining of the leaves. Like mother nature just has a way of just showing us the gorgeous um, colors. And you know, when I think about the outlining of the leaves, it looks like somebody literally just took a marker and just outlined those leaves. Gorgeous looking plant with coleus plants. They're very versatile plants. They do very well in bright light, sometimes even full sun, but they are a very thirsty plant. So make sure that you're watering them ad adequately. If not, they will die just like any other plant, but they are a thirsty plant for sure. Very easy to propagate. You can literally take a cutting, put it in water, it will root, or you can just stick it directly in soil and you got a new plant. Um, I will be showing you some more of these gardenias right here. Look at how gorgeous these gardenias are and they are so fragrant. Um, it makes me really want to buy a gardenia, but if I'm going to buy one, I definitely want to get one that's either a variegated version, and then we've got some gorgeous looking Epipremnum panatum albos, again on a totem. I believe these are for $149.99. Not a bad price, honestly, when you think about how long it took to establish the plant. This one's got some really good variegation. Look at this all white leaf one right over here. Very interesting um, plant indeed. And then we've got another Epipremnum panatum cebu blue so these are endemic again or often seen in the philippines specifically in the cebu islands um, i always like talking about plants that are from the philippines just because i'm filipino super proud to be filipino and it's one of those things where like most of the times when you are in a different country you don't pay attention to plants that are pretty much considered as weeds so that's you know something that's really interesting i do want to show you guys these hydra helix and also this coleus plant right here so you can get this coleus plant i believe this one is for two dollars and 49 cents grow it um outside and you will have a full bush plant and then you can actually grow them indoors i just can't pronounce this particular name i think this is a alton uh, name i'm not even going to try to pronounce this name but basically this one has so many cool colors this one um supposedly is more for ground cover but i've seen this plant actually offered as a costa farms exotic angel plant there was like a purple version but you can see they've got a lot of these like garden accent plants we've got some hedra helix or hedera helix english ivy plants right over there you guys already know if you watch my videos i love english ivies but they hate me as well so they're just really challenging plants and then this is that plant again but this one is a more of like the neon yellow color plant i love neon plants yellow plants as well i probably need to like do a haul where i just get like neon plants and i did want to grow this white um edge swedish ivy plant um, I have the, um, I ended up actually buying one, so I'm considering growing this indoors, but for now, I'm going to pot it up in like a 
five inch um, planter grow it outside and see if it'll grow pretty fast and then i'll take some cuttings and see if i can multiply that i love propagating plants and right here we've got a Pelea microphylla. So, you know, normally I would see Pelea plants and they're typically like the metal, shiny looking ones. But this one right here has some really tiny leaves. So that's really interesting. These are all for, I believe, three. 2.99, I think it's a 2.99, something like that. So all of these plants are available. It looks like a lot of people have already bought through these plants. So like, that's just really interesting. And um, you know, if you are ever in the Dallas Fort Worth area and you are just visiting, definitely check out a Callaway's Nursery. They have so many friendly, you know, staff members, so many plants to choose from. I mean, like right here, you can get all of these cool coleus plants for 2.49. I mean, that is not a bad price at all. And with coleus plants or what you call mayana plants that's what we call them in the philippines they're very easy to grow they're very vigorous growers actually they're fast growers and literally you can just chop them up and put them in soil and they will definitely root very quickly they come in different shapes sizes and what's interesting is you can actually grow them to grow up like a tree or like a canopy um, they get woody eventually so that's something that's interesting i ended up finding in instagram account that does it they're based out in europe and i really um, like the look of that so that's something i might have goals for eventually but I just wanted to show you all of these different types of coleus plants. I probably need to buy several of them and see if I can grow them. I got some from HEB, which is a grocery store that's really just out in Texas. And I got a hanging basket for like $8.97. It was a full one. So, you know, it depends on where you go shopping. And then you can see impatience again hanging baskets of impatience my grandmother grew those as a kid as well as vinca so impatience are another plant that you know are easy to grow in the landscape and then we've got a bunch of wax begonia here i still have to you know repot my wax begonia i ended up getting one but with white um blooms i thought that that would really be cool but look at all of these flowers right here and i just want us to just sit back and admire all of the space that they have at this um, local nursery called callaways We are passing by a bunch of hibiscus plants you know this is a tropical flowering plant um, that is also some, something that we grow in the philippines we call those gomamela and i just love that those aren't in bloom but look at all of the flowers that callaway's nursery can offer i really love that a lot and then we have some more um, plants right here now these are what you call pre bonsai starters so um, i'm actually thinking about doing some more bonsai like this one right here is not a bad price i think this is for 2.99 but this is a small cherry um, cherry tree plant and then they've got some more variegated versions of just pre bonsai plants so i'm not 100 percent sure what they are i do have some small bonsai um pots that i can do so we may end up doing that i might do a video showing that you know i have so many ideas when it comes to like plant videos but it's just a matter of being able to get them you know i try my consistency to get them so we will see um what happens but you can see with this specific uh, specific Callaway's um, nursery there's just endless amounts of plants so I just want to take you guys through and show you some of my favorite plants and just plants in general um, you already know that if you've been watching my um, plant shopping videos I love aglonemas and you know Callaway's has a pretty good selection of aglonemas I actually like the smaller aglonemas that they have available for $12.99 you can see there's a bunch there and in here we have another epiprenum panatum cebu blue pothos this one's in a four inch starter planter for only $6.99. That is not a bad price at all. I'm actually considering getting a couple more of those just because why not, right? The thing is with the Cebu Blue Pothos, those are so easy to um, propagate. And this one I actually should have bought. Um, I regret not getting when I went to this trip. This one is an aglonema, but look at the roots. I just like that it's a different type of aglonema. Look at that variegation, gorgeous looking aglonema. And again, with aglonemas, um, like this one right here this one i believe is an aglonema red king um you know with aglonemas the one thing that you do not want to do is overwater an aglonema they really like to be more on the dry side and um, they do like more bright indirect light you know they say you know they market these plants as being um 
low light, low light tolerant, but what that means is they can grow in low light conditions, but they won't grow quickly. And eventually they'll end up getting leggy if they don't get sufficient amount of light. So that's the thing with plants. All plants need some form of light in order for them to photosynthesize, which is basically how the plant gets its, you know, food and nutrients. Here is a gorgeous looking Aglonema Sparkling Sarah. I have this one as well. What I like about the Sparkling Sarah is the pink stems and then just look at all of that color that this particular plant has. Um, the best place to get Aglonemas or the ones that you know the country that actually hybridizes a lot of it would be indonesia there is a particular etsy seller called baroka plants that i've successfully been able to import a bunch of hard to find aglonema so check that out they did not sponsor me i have a video where i did an import um, unboxing and you will see the quality of plants i ended up getting from baroka plants from indonesia but that one right there is an aglonema juliet and we just have some more assorted aglonema so what i've been doing with my aglonemas i've actually been um, transferring them to hydroponics which is basically growing them taking all of the soil out and growing them in just straight water and they've been doing fine for me and look at this gorgeous looking maiden hair fern hanging basket it looks gorgeous now but you know with ma maiden hair ferns they require a lot of bright um, indirect light and also a lot of humidity they definitely don't want to dry out otherwise they end up just getting crispy crispy so you can see right over here we've got some pitcher plants some carnivorous plants hanging baskets those are super cool i haven't gotten any carnivorous plants but you know there might be a time and place for me when i eventually get one and then look at this trailing um epiprenum panatum cebu blue nice looking one and then we just have some more starter plants here that's what I love about um, Callaways. They've got a variety of um, sizes of plants. These ones are for $2.99, but you know what? If you wanna start a plant and grow it to a larger plant, that's not a bad option at all. I mean, for $2.99, that is not a bad price at all. And then look at this right here. That is another pitcher plant. Not a bad price for a carnivorous plant. And we have some more um, starter plants here. We'll just take a look at those. Some smaller hanging baskets of um, plants this one is a peperomia serpents for $12.99 in a four inch hanging basket super cute so if you have just a small space that you don't want to put like a heavy hanging basket plant um, the four inch ones especially since they're in plastic will do very well here is another one right here a staghorn fern i've been talking about it pretty much in every single video that i feature staghorn ferns but i would love to be able to mount a staghorn fern on like a wooden plank and then one of my favorite plants right here, this is a palea or an aluminum plant. I love just the texture of the leaves. Got It has that aluminum shine about it. And this one is also for $12.99. Now with palea plants, you definitely want to trim them back otherwise they will get leggy the same thing with tritscanthia plants they are very easy to propagate as well you can just stick them in water and they will root here we've got a purple waffle plant in a hanging basket surprisingly of all the waffle plants i have i've got the snow white waffle plant which is not doing as well the purple waffle plant does not seem to be crisping it seems to be living its best life so not sure if it's just the more variegation of a snow white waffle plant that makes it a little bit more challenging and in here we've got a peperomia obtusifolia just a green variety for 12.99 in a four inch planter love the leaves um even just a green form i just love the leaf shape it's round it's shiny it's rubbery it feels like a hoya love me some peperomia plants i've actually added a couple to my collection and then there's just a bunch more of those little four inch hanging basket plants um again huge fan of callaways and then look at these right here these are spathophyllum look at how large these peace lily plants are and then just the texture of the leaves now with peace lilies the only thing that you know the drawback about them is that they're very thirsty plants so if you don't water them substantially they will look like they're about to die and then if you water them they will just perk up like that um we're going to be approaching some gorgeous looking dracaena rikis and these ones are actually in bloom so that's really cool to see you know plants in bloom the thing about it is if you're growing a plant and you let it bloom just know that the energy the plant puts into those blooms will take away from it growing more foliage or leaves so 
I always say, you know, cut the blooms away from the plant, especially if you are wanting to get more um, growth because it will stun the growth slightly. And here we've got a Dracaena limelight. Look at how gorgeous that neon yellow look about it is. And again, with Dracaenas, one of the most underrated plants. I think Dracaenas, especially these large forms, are typically just seen in like offices, um, you know, hospitals, or just some corporate setting. The thing about it is they are low light tolerant plants. They don't require a lot of water, so they're very easy to grow. Um, I would recommend that for anybody who's starting um, house plants and just getting into it. And then right here, we've got some Syngoniums. Very nice full Syngonium. These ones, I believe, are for $24.99. I do think that, um, or $29.99, I do think that you can get some more um, plants. So we'll see what kind of um, Syngoniums we have right over here but this one is one of my favorite ones i like the pink um veining you know syngoniums used to be my number one favorite plant they might actually take the crown just because aglonemas have been giving me some slight troubles but you know I love all plants, but I think the reason why I like syngoniums is because as a kid, my first ever, my first house plant that I ever bought was a syngonium white butterfly. I remember we were growing it in the bathroom, and for some reason, it still survived considering there wasn't a lot of good lighting conditions. Um, with syngoniums, they can tolerate lower light conditions, but they really prefer bright light. And like this one right here, this pink one, beautiful looking one. I was actually going to buy this one for $6.99. Um, they do best in bright, indirect light um, they don't like to be underwatered um, or overwatered but um, I say if you don't water them and they get really dry they really become susceptible to pests especially spider mites and mealybugs so that's really with any plant like if you don't give them the right care tips their health declines and that basically like gives pheromones to like invite plant pests so that that's just a tip that i would say just make sure that when you are buying plants like a syngonium you do know the care tips for it um i mean like look at this right there that's got so many roots um the care tips for these plants and you will really keep um plant pests at bay i think that's probably one of the most discouraging things about you know growing plants especially indoors is just the pest i know that i've had a huge like mealybug infestation spider mite infestation like a year ago where i just basically gave up on my plants all of my plants just ended up dying because I got really upset and discouraged and I just didn't want to give that effort to grow plants. Um, plant foldies or anybody watching my video as we're looking at these starter plants, let me know in the comments if you've had that situation where you just had a bunch of plants, you had a huge pest infestation and then you just kind of gave up and then all of your plants ended up dying. I was actually surprised that my love for indoor plants was actually reignited a couple months back and I actually ended up starting a YouTube channel showing you all of my, um, you know, plant finds and plant shopping. I had a YouTube channel a while back where I was showing a lot of my, you know, plants in general, but it's just really good that I was able to get that inspiration. And I would say even um, now, as we have this like community that's growing with plant foldies, I do want to say thank you for always, always premiere going to my live premieres and you know all of my regular plant foldies that engage with me in the chat. I try my very best to make every single one of them or at least come over and say hi. Um, just because it's really fun you know the plant community online can be a very positive one i know that there have been times where you know things online can get a little toxic but this um, channel this community that i am hoping to continue to grow i will always advocate for positivity so um you know feel free to ask any questions you know i will try to answer them especially when we're looking at plants like this you know we've got a philodendron um goldie eye gorgeous looking plant that plant can actually get very large so again know the maximum span of your plant sizes because if you look at your space at your home you want to make sure you have ample amount of space and we're looking at so many um aglonemas here that aglonema red siam that is a classic aglonema alongside with like the aglonema silver bay everybody needs to um, get an aglonema especially if you consider yourself a plant foldy and here we've got a black rabbit's foot fern in a crate. 
and that one I actually am interested in adding to my plant collection so we will see if that will actually be my first fern I haven't added any ferns to my collection and then we're gonna walk over here you know we passed by a bunch of juvenile Monstera deliciosas here we've got a philodendron heteracium Brazil $6.99 that is not a bad price at all especially with the type of variegation and just the lush and full pot of philodendron heteracium love the heart shaped leaves this one has some really nice high variegation now if you are a person that's starting to get into house plants this is a plant i would highly recommend easy to care for as well as well as like a monstera um, deliciosa i like the juvenile form this one's for 16.99 I wish Monstera Deliciosa at times didn't fenestrate. I really actually like the heart-shaped leaves. So, you know, that's that's just me, I guess, you know, looking at these juvenile leaves, like this one is starting to fenestrate, but I wouldn't mind a juvenile Monstera Deliciosa just staying, you know, ju juvenile. And then here we've got some Hoya Carnosas in hanging baskets. Now for all of my Hoya heads or those who like Hoyas, I am on the hunt to try to show you guys as many Hoya varieties as possible. Typically they are more, I guess I find them more so when I go to like a local plant nursery. Um, I did show a couple from my last video from Callaway's and then here we've got some silver satin skindapsis gotta love some silver satin skindapsis you know with skindapsis plants they grow similar to like um pothos plants they're just a little bit more slower um in growth as compared to a pothos plant but i love the velvety texture of the leaves and they do let you know when they are um, thirsty their leaves start to curl and then we've got some ficus elastica burgundies right here gotta love your rubber tree plants you can actually grow them at least in my experience in full sun and they can really get large very quickly when you do that and then right over here, we've got some Pachira aquaticas or some money tree plants. I mean, these plants, again, are grown because, you know, people think that they are they bring good luck. I like those. I'm looking for a variegated form. And then we're seeing a bunch of assorted um, palms right here. One of my favorite palms is the Raphis palm. Look at the, the shape of the leaves. And that one can actually tolerate lower light conditions, although most palms, just like ficus plants, need a lot of light not sure what this foliage plant is right here so if you know the plant id i think it's super cute though in a four inch hanging basket and then we're going to look at some more palms right here and um you know this one is a typical palm that you will see i just don't really have a lot of interest for palms you know i've heard that they can be mealy bug um susceptible so i'm really not trying to bring plants like that um, and then we have got an Amidrium uh, medium silver. I've got to go ahead and pot up this, you know, I got like three or four cuttings of these. I've got to pot them up, but they definitely need to grow up a totem or some type of pole. Otherwise they will get leggy and just shoot more runners. And then you won't get that gorgeous looking fenestration. I do like the fact that the leaves are a little bit more on the silver tone. So we can just take a look and admire those plants here. looking at a anthurium clavary nervium i think that's how you pronounce it for 59.99 in a six inch crate this one's growing in some sphagnum moss but look at how gorgeous that heart-shaped leaf is and also just the the veins of it i don't have any of these type of anthuriums the only type of anthurium i have are the floral type of anthuriums with the blooms and all of my anthuriums are actually growing in hydroponics so just straight water they've been doing very well for me but i might eventually get anthuriums i just haven't had the best luck with them because they re like really do require some humidity and their lighting conditions or they're just they just ask a lot and i can't give that type of care specifically for them and then you can see right here we've got a bunch of like sansevarias or snake plants we're going to pan over here and look at some more of these plants now these are the smaller um, dracaena plants again i highly recommend dracaenas i know some people might think these are basic plants but like right here is a dracaena a janet craig compacta these get very compact um, in their growth for sure just a green form and then we've got a dracaena um, lemon surprise right here I really like the variegation and just the colors of the stripes of the leaves. You know, you get different forms of them. I want to actually collect several of these and they can actually get fairly large. They can get up to three to four feet 
tall and they are just easy to care for plants here is a dracaena white jewel nice looking one as well i have one dracaena in my collection and that is the dracaena hurricane slash tornado the variegated form i ended up buying that at plant keeper incorporated another local plant nursery in dallas i've got a couple of videos of that plant nursery so if you haven't already please check it out and check out this Alocasia fry deck for $16.99. You know, this was an Alocasia that was a little bit more uncommon to find. And it's just so cool. In 2024, we can find a lot of these plants. And it's just great that all of these plants are more um, accessible for just anybody. It doesn't mean that, you know, back then some of these plants were really for those who had money. So I just believe that plants should be accessible to everybody. Um, not just those that have a lot of money because plants make people happy and we want everybody to be happy, right? And then we've got some more Peperomia Serpents right over here. This is another Peperomia I might consider getting. I like that lum variegation, like take a look at that. And these are only for $6.99, not a bad one either. And I like that that heart, I mean, heart shape leaves are so cute and elegant. And you know, Peperomias for, for the most part, or at least in my experience, are fairly easy to care for plants. So um, what else, what other plants do we have over here? We've got some more, Amidrian silver medium plants. These are so cute, but these ones are actually not growing on a totem So you can see that the leaves are not getting large and then we've got a bunch of calatheas here This is a calathea um, medallion. I love the purple undersides. This one is in a six inch planter for $16.99 Which is not bad at all. Now. I have found that calatheas have always been very very finicky they're very picky about their water they need high humidity but i have recently discovered that if you take the calathea out of the soil wash their roots and put them in just straight water and grow them in hydroponic situations they're super easy to grow like i never have to worry about whether i need to water them or not i don't have to worry about whether they're getting enough um humidity because they're sitting in water so they're always being watered and then also the um, ambient um, humidity that's coming from like the bowl of water is enough so I have started growing calatheas. I've got two calatheas in hydroponics and I'm thinking about getting my um, calathea obtusifolia um, or orbif no, obtus orbifolia in um, hydroponics so we'll see. I do like this calathea this green go um, goddess one that one's really nice and i have this particular calathea i just don't know the plant id for this particular calathea so if you can please give me the plant id in the comments or in the live premiere chats all of those um, four inch calathea starters are only for 6.99 so those are really cool and then we've got a bunch of um, pothos plants right here pearls and jade marble queen pothos jade pothos and neon pothos look at how gorgeous that neon pothos looks and again all of these um pothos plants very easy to care for plants um so if you are wanting to start a you know if you're just getting into house plants those all of the plants that i've shown you right there are good to start with and then we've got a philodendron brantiana for $24.99 gorgeous looking metallic leaves now with this um, philodendron brantianum they do need a little bit more humidity and they tend to like to grow more so up a totem pole um, their leaves get very large very quickly too when you start to grow them up a pole and then we've got some epipremnum panatum neons right over here um, these are for $19.99. Um, these are similar to the Cebu Blue Pothos, and you can see it's already trailing, but these plants particularly want to grow up versus trailing. Um, you will start to see fenestrations in their leaves when you start to do that, and it's nice. Twenty, You know, $19.99 is not a bad price at all, considering this plant grows pretty vigorously and um, easy to propagate. I haven't ever seen this type of bromeliad. Like, do you see this? Does this even look real? These blooms are really interesting. Um, I've never seen these bromeliads. Again, there are so many bromeliads available, but these unique looking ones, I don't ever really see at a big box store. The only ones I really see in a big box store are the ones on the far right up there. And sometimes these are at the big box store, but if you like pink plants and you like all of the colors that a bromeliad has, um, I would definitely recommend it. Like this one's got a very dark burgundy red color about it. Really like that a lot. These are for $24.99. And I will say Callaway's Nursery has the most diversity when it comes to bromeliads, especially these gorgeous looking pink ones. I mean, it really does look like somebody took like some spray paint and spray painted the leaves. I really like that a lot. And these bromeliads, 
From what I've seen, it have been fairly easy to grow. I would prefer getting these, and obviously if you're gonna grow bromeliads, you wanna um, probably set them closer to the floor or somewhere where you can view them from the top. Like look at this one right here, very delicate looking um, cream variegation, and even the undersides have like stripes. So there's just a lot of leaf interest when it comes to bromeliads. I prefer these bromeliads. So if you know specifically what these species of bromeliads are, please let me know in the comments if you grow them and let me know if you like these bromeliads. Like I am all about it. All of the ones that you are seeing so far are for $24.99. So that's not a bad price at all. And I just love looking at all of these plants. So let me know what you guys think so far. And I'm just gonna pan over here and show you some more plants. ginseng ficus bonsai so they've got a couple of um, bonsai starters right here this one is for $19.99 so basically you can get this starter and just put it in a shallow pot that's basically bonsai um, I'm not as big of a fan though on ficus ginseng bonsai because I feel like you rely more so on the trunk versus the actual structure of the leaves but there's so many plants like this cryptanthus right here again I showed you this last time but I love the pink on it this almost reminds me of like a pink sansevieria or a snake plant really like that a lot I just don't know all of the care tips for that and we're just gonna pan over and look at all of these large foliage leaves love all of these ficus lyrata or fiddle fig leaf a bunch of ZZ plants super easy to grow we already know ZZ plants they don't really require a lot of bright light they can tolerate lower light conditions just don't overwater them and we'll just take a look at some more of these larger plants that Callaway's offers here lot of Monstera Thai constellations and get one yourself I would recommend Callaway's nursery because they do have different sizes and you know you can start one from a four inch um, potted up one you can get a six inch one you can get one as large as 10 inches um, in the pot and they're all fairly priced well. I would say if you get lucky though, I've seen that a Home Depot out in Chicago, Illinois actually had um, some for like $39.99. But yes, we are gonna just take a look at some more plants right here. We've got some more Cremthanthus right here. These are the smaller varieties. So if you're into pink plants, bromeliads and Cremthanthus you know, are um, something I recommend. And then we have those, um, Trade Scanthia Nanooks right here for $9.99. I actually bought one of these um, in a four inch uh, starter planter right here. Love the look of it. Love this um, um, Trade Scanthia just because it's got larger leaves and they're very easy to propagate as well. I've got some actually rooting in water and then we have some basic bromeliads here that you often see. And then these are so unique. I've never seen these bromeliads, but look at their blooms. Very unique indeed. And I am in love with them. I may eventually get some, um, you know, bromeliads, but more so the pink ones. And we're passing by a bunch of pothos. I still want to know this Calathea plant ID. This was for $6.99. Um, I would love to know that, but that one I have growing in hydroponics and it's doing very well for me. So, you know, whenever I go to Callaway's nursery, I always look at the um, Calatheas now. I ended up actually ordering um, a Calathea white fusion, yellow fusion from Green Escapes off of Etsy that I intend to also grow in hydroponics. Um, I really like that because then I don't have to worry so much about when I should water the plant and it gives it ample amount of... Um, you know humidity the ambient humidity same thing with these anthuriums right here all three of my anthuriums that i have so far in hydroponics are doing fabulous and i'm just happy about that but as you can see callaway's nursery just has so many plants so we're just going to keep looking at all these assorted ferns and eventually we're going to go outside and take a look at some of their outdoor gardening plants
I just really love looking at Epiprenum Panatum Albos growing on a totem. I actually have one that I have neglected so much um, still in my garage. So I might actually try to like take care of it, get it all ready, maybe just get it outside in my back patio so it will actually start to grow and thrive again. I am such a bad plant parent at times because when I get overwhelmed with plants, instead of like trying to give them the care they need, I sometimes just give up and just let the plant decline. So it's really bad on my part. I'm trying to do better. And then over here, we've got a Stramanthi Triosar. This one's highly variegated, gorgeous looking plant. The one I actually got um, from a big box store called Target is doing very well for me. Um, it's not crisping or anything, but as you guys can see, it is a cloudy day. It's been raining a lot actually in the North Dallas area, but needless to say, all of these gorgeous outdoor plants are here. So I'm just going to feature a couple of my favorite plants. And really these are more of the gardening plants I would put out in my landscape. Um, I love Japanese aesthetics. That's why I love like origami and Japanese food, just Japanese culture in general. And when I take a look at this, for instance, this is a cascading or weeping, um, 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 peach tree but you know that is another peach tree plant that I would grow just because I love the blooms now as you can see the blooms are almost over but it's gonna have some more like red um, foliage should still have some really nice interest that's not a bad price at all although I wish I would have purchased this plant um, about a month ago when it was dormant so I could actually plant it in the ground so the thing about planting trees the best time to do it is when they're dormant or they haven't like started to grow their leaves out or in the fall when they're about to go dormant that way it has time for them to develop their root system and here we've got a bunch of azaleas right here you already know my love for azaleas Azaleas are almost similar to like Hedra Helix or English Ivies. As much as I love them, they actually are a little bit more finicky of a plant for me to grow. I just haven't had the best luck with them. I will tell you the best kind of plant that has done me very well are some ginkgo trees. So these ones are the dwarf forms. I love ginkgo trees. And a little bit of tidbit about ginkgo trees are they're drought tolerant, they can take full sun. And for the longest time, they are considered a prehistoric um, type tree. Um, you know, there was like one ginkgo tree left before um, in, that was discovered in China that was cultivated. Otherwise, it would have gone extinct. But these um, apparently were trees that were around when the dinosaurs were around. So I think this is like a, a very old type of tree. And it's one that I really like. The fall colors are yellow and it's just stunning. And then you can see all of these beautiful Acer palmatums or Japanese maples. So that is another type of content that I will be featuring. So if you love Japanese maples or have never seen them, you will see a lot from my channel um, because that is another love of mine. It kind of co coincides with my love for bonsai trees. I mean, look at this, look at that crimson red color of these Japanese maples. Um, I really didn't get into Japanese maples until I moved up into North Dallas area. Um, they are, you can grow them. They are a little bit more challenging out in North Dallas, just in Texas in general, just because they do require um, a little bit more shade and it, and the weather, whether you have them in shade or not, once it starts to hit 100 degrees, their leaves start to burn. So it's just a little bit more challenging to grow. But again, Japanese maples I would love you know my dream is to have like a Japanese maple forest with all of a collection just really having a nice niche looking Japanese garden you know just being able to admire them the simplicity of it and just also the elegance of Japanese maples if you are going to grow them in your landscape you definitely want to amend the soil which is basically making sure that you put um really um, fast draining soil they don't like to stay in water and so that's why like I am worried that some of my Japanese maples have gotten too much water since it has been um, raining a lot in North Dallas but needless to say these are gorgeous and I just want to sit here and kind of admire them and um, you let me know what you think about these Japanese maples. Japanese maples. These are um, released by Monrova. Those are Japanese maples 
blood good and then I wanted to go and show you this cascading red bud tree so if you live in a North Dallas area you will often see this tree um, I love ornamental flowering trees I'm even thinking about possibly getting like a dogwood there's just so many plants that I love aside from just the indoor tropical plants like look at that isn't that such a gorgeous looking um, ornamental tree I do like the weeping um, forms as well that would definitely do go well in a Japanese garden and then here we've got a bunch of peonies these look like they're about to um, bloom and you know when I think of peonies I think of how like they almost have like a tropical vibe about them and I do like that that's a Monrova little stand right there and you can see there's just so many Japanese maples here the thing about it is these maples really need to start getting planted in the ground um, before it gets a little too hot for them I plan on visiting Metro Maples which is a Japanese maple nursery or just a maple farm out in Fort Worth Texas I'm gonna just reach out to Scott Hubble and see if I can make a little appointment and film that for y'all but I think he would actually like it he has so many Japanese maples different types of maples as well as like like rare satsuki azaleas but you can see right here we've got a bunch of azaleas there's a lot of encore azaleas which are basically azaleas that can bloom at least three times a year most azaleas will usually only bloom in the spring but the, the encore varieties will um, bloom spring summer and fall this one is a coral bells um, coral bells azalea that which is basically a satsuki azalea look at how tiny the the, the flowers are but look at how gorgeous um, the pink is love azaleas now again with azaleas they need fast draining soil um, they don't like to dry out and um, they're just really nice looking flowers right there they do like acidic um, soil as well so make sure that you um, get your soil to be acidic the way to do it is by putting coffee grinds that'll make your soil more acidic as well as you know Japanese maples they actually like more acidic soil like look at how elegant and gorgeous it is and we're just gonna go admire the the scenery we have right over here looking at some Fatsa Japonica camouflage or um, Japanese Aralia I absolutely love the, the camouflage version I mean it is a little bit pricey I believe this is $59.99 in a 10 inch planter but that green on green variegation is to die for like look at that so cool and I've been told that you can grow Aralia indoors um, I've seen this often as well. This is a Fatsa Japonica spider web. Look at how cute that looks too. Look at that variegation. It's stunning. I actually want to get this um, Aralia as well as the camouflage. Um, they kind of look like Japanese maple leaves as well. And you can see there's a ton of them here. What's really cool is you can actually grow these outdoors in an outdoor landscape in North Dallas because they will just die back. They're a perennial and come back to life, you know, in the springtime. But I will would love to be able to grow you know this indoors as well the thing about it is you know when you're buying large plants like this you have to have this space but you know aralias are something that i would love to grow i think it's not really commonly grown indoors but it is possible so for anybody who's grown japanese aralia or fats and japonica let me know um, how it's done for you indoors what you think about it but these are absolutely stunning and with the spider web version you definitely want to give it a lot more bright and direct like to get that variegation but honestly the camouflage one is really cool i might eventually get that at callaways if they still have those available and i've been seeing a lot of this tractor seat plants has anybody grown tractor seat plants indoors and if you have have you been able to successfully grow them or are they more more of like a perennial outdoor landscape plant and here we've got some just regular green Fatsa japonicas or um, Japanese aurelias and just look at that gorgeous looking Japanese maple like if you don't have Japanese maples in your outdoors and you have the shade you definitely need to get it I would highly recommend it but look at this right here now I did see some um, Japanese aurelias being offered at um H-E-B, which is a grocery store out in Dallas um, that are selling them for a little bit cheaper. So I'm probably going to get the green version there, but let's just keep walking around and admiring the plants. It is a gorgeous day, even though it is a little bit cloudy, 
But again, um, my goal someday and my dream is to really have a full blown Japanese garden. Um, I went to the New Orleans Japanese garden um, and they had such a beautiful, just a little small space, but their setup was so gorgeous and I definitely want to do it. I have so many plans, but again, it does cost money. So hopefully I can, you know, save funds to create it. So for those who have sent me super stickers, tips on my um, my videos, even in the live premiere chats, I did want to say thank you so much. It does help fund my plant obsession and just even my YouTube and just the patronage you gave me. So thank you for those who have taken the time to just drop a tip for some of my videos. I um, really appreciate that because then I can buy more plants and keep producing more videos for y'all. Even a simple like on my um, videos really helps out so i can't tell you enough i know i've repeated myself multiple times and thank you to even the plant foldies that are on the live premiere chats encouraging people to hit the like button i didn't realize how much it does help push my videos out to more plant lovers so um, if you can please hit the like button if you haven't already and if you haven't subscribed i did check my analytics and i'm like there's still so many people that watch my videos but haven't subscribed so let me know what I need to do for you guys to actually hit the subscribe button because I would really like for our community to grow. And you can see here, I'm just panning over all of these gorgeous azaleas. They haven't gotten into full bloom yet. Um, I am going to be planting some azaleas in my, um, my beds, my um, flower beds in the backyard. So we will see how that will turn out for me this year. I did have two Satsuki azaleas that survived the winter. So I'm excited about that. But um, we are about to end this video, but before I do that, I did want to show you this gorgeous Monstera Thai constellation. Um, as always, my plant foldies, um, you know, it's really fun to have you guys see these um, plant videos. I know I've been doing a lot of like um, local plant nursery shopping, but I promise you more big box store plant shopping videos are coming up this weekend. Please follow me on Instagram and check out this gorgeous looking Philodendron Bellitiae. I'm probably going to buy this one since the price is not that bad. This is Richie at Growfolds. Thank you so much again for uh, tuning into my video and I will definitely see you on the next one. Bye.